Good morning to all of you. Today's service is just a little bit different. Instead of having a sermon, I am going to just do a little bit of framing of today's text and invite Francisco to share his testimony. And then I'll wrap that up a little bit. So the the flow of today will be a little bit different. Our text today, as Jonah said during children's time, is from John chapter 11, and it's the story of Lazarus. Lazarus is a character that we don't meet anywhere else in the Bible. Well, this Lazarus. There are some other Lazaruses, Lazari. But we don't, we don't meet this one except in this story. And he's introduced along with his two sisters. Can any kids who learned this story last week in Sunday school tell me who those two sisters are? Anyone remember? Yeah? Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha. Yeah, do we meet them anywhere else in the Bible? Yeah, we have other Mary and Martha stories in the Bible. So it turns out they have a brother. Jesus is also friends with him. And we learned in a nicely succinct way that Lazarus was sick. Jesus waited a couple days to go to him until he was really and truly dead. And then Jesus finally arrived and raised him from the dead. I saw children walking around with toilet paper after Sunday school last week, and I wonder if anyone can help me know why. Yes. They mummified each other in Sunday school. They had a mummifying challenge. It is a very playful take on the text. Right, because Lazarus was wrapped in burial cloth. So this was the, this was the way that we, the Jews of Jesus' time handled dead bodies. They, they were not embalmed. Instead, they were anointed with spices and oils and then wrapped in linen strips and put into a tomb, and that tomb was sealed with a stone. And then the, the body stayed in there for 11 months, and after that they would roll that stone away. If you're hearing any hints of what's to come, good for you. And then they would take those now, um, now just bones of the person and put those in a box, put them on a shelf, and that was how someone went from the living flesh to fully buried. So Lazarus has started this process. He uh, has, has been dead for long enough now to be really and truly dead and fully buried. So Jesus bringing him back to life is a little different from the Jesus bringing people back to life stories in other parts of the Bible. The other stories, do, there are two others, and in those, the person has just died. They're not buried yet. We can maybe explain those away, but there's no explaining this one away. John 11 is a really beautiful and emotional story. I encourage all of you to read it in full. I will read just a little bit of it after Francisco's testimony. I learned, one of the first passages I ever learned was what I was told was the shortest verse in the Bible. Can anyone remember that? What is it? Jesus wept or Jesus began to weep. That's in this story. The story includes dialogue with Mary and Martha where we hear how emotionally wrought this is for Jesus. This story shows the deep love, the close relationship between Jesus and his friends. This is a part of Jesus that we don't always see described in the Gospels. I think it humanizes Jesus. In this story, we really see Jesus as our friend. And at the same time, Jesus is doing this huge act 
of raising someone from the dead. So we see Jesus the Christ and Jesus the friend all together in this one story. This story is the last of six of what are called signs in the book of John. The one that we talked about last week of healing the blind man, that was the fifth of these six signs, which immediately makes me go back to the signs in the book of Exodus, which we started calling plagues, but in Exodus they're just called signs and wonders. And those are not sent to torture the people. Those are sent to reveal who God is. And in a similar way, these signs by Jesus in the book of John are to reveal Jesus, to show who Jesus is, to show who God is. Each of these signs has, has within it an act of restoration. Restoration to sight, restoration to community, restoration to health. And today's story is the ultimate act of restoration. Restoration to life. So for today, I asked Francisco to tell us his story of new life in Jesus. Francisco. Buenos dias. Good morning. Um, un día a la edad de 14 años, mi hermano mayor puso un negocio de cubos y licuados, el cual yo atendía, pero por aproximadamente dos meses no vendía nada. At the age of 14, my, bro my older brother started a juice and smoothie business, which I ran. But for about two months, I didn't sell anything. Un día llegó una persona y me pidió una fruta que después me la pagaba. Yo le dije, no, llévatela. One day a person came and asked me for fruit and said he would pay me later. But I told him, don't worry about it, just take it. Después esa persona regresó con dos personas más pidiendo frutas y que después me las pagaban. Gracias a Dios, estas personas regresaban agradecidas por confiar en, en ellas y me las pagaban. Later that person came back with two more people asking for fruit and that they would pay me later. Thank God these people came back grateful for my trust in them and paid me. Yo invertía lo que ganaba en más mercancía. La verdad es que yo pensé, en vez de que se perdieran las frutas, mejor las regalaba. I invested what I earned in more merchandise. The truth is that I thought instead of losing the fruit, it would be better to give them away. Y así creció el negocio, el cual después se los dejé a mis hermanos. And so the business grew, which I later left to my brothers. A la edad de 18 años fui a visitar a unos familiares de mi mamá al estado de Hidalgo y ahí entré a trabajar en una compañía y me hice amigo de una persona de alto nivel en esa compañía. At the age of 18, I went to visit my mother's relatives in the state of Hidalgo. There I went to work at a company and I became friends with a high level person of that company. Él me animó a estudiar un curso de contabilidad. Después de dos años de estudios, él me invitó a trabajar en una compañía como contable. He encouraged me to study an accounting course. After two years of studies, he invited me to work in a company as an accountant. Allí trabajé por ocho años. Allí aprendí buen comportamiento y buenos modales. I worked there for eight years. There I learned good behavior and good manners. Conocí a Antonia y nos casamos y vivimos en Apan Hidalgo. Después cerraron la compañía y nos, nos tuvimos que trasladar al estado de Veracruz. I met Antonia. We got married and lived in Apan Hidalgo. 
Then the company closed and we had to move to the state of Veracruz. Con ayuda de inmediata del mismo hermano que me puso el negocio de, de frutas y licuados, entré a trabajar en una oficina de crédito a productores de caña. With the immediate help of the same brother who started my fruit and smoothie business, I started working in a credit office for sugarcane growers. A ellos les ayudaba con pases para servicios médicos y sus pensiones. Estuve ahí por seis años y por razones inconvenientes y porque mis padres murieron, emigramos a los Estados Unidos. I helped them with passes for medical services and pensions. I was there for six years and for inconvenient reasons and because my parents died, we emigrated to the United States. Al poco tiempo, empecé a ayudar a mis hermanos con medicamentos y necesidades. Cuando ella tenía un añito, este, a los 20 años de casados, yo nos bendijo con Nelly. Soon after I began to help my siblings with medicine and necessities, and after 20 years of marriage, God blessed us with Nelly. Cuando ella tenía un año, fuimos a México para que los padres de Antonia conocieran a la niña. When she was a year old, we went to Mexico so Antonia's parents could meet her. Al estar en México, la mamá de Antonia falleció. While in Mexico, Antonia's mother passed away. Al regresar a los Estados Unidos, Fuimos a visitar una sobrina de Antonia y escuché que hablaban de, la, de, la, de una iglesia y de Dios. Les pregunté a ella dónde y por qué. Yo quería saber quién y cómo era Dios. When we returned to the United States, we went to visit one of Antonia's nieces and I heard them talking about a church and God. I asked her where because I wanted to know who and what God was like. Visitamos aquí y al poco, al poco tiempo nos bautizamos y nos regalaron una Biblia. Ahora entiendo cómo Dios quiere que seamos. We visited here and soon after we were baptized and they gave us a Bible. Now I understand how God wants us to be. ¿Qué quiero decir? Que por muchos años tuve una familia muy pequeña, pero aquí he ganado muchos hermanos. Y estoy contento porque ahora tengo una gran familia. Dios los bendiga. What do I want to say? That for many years I had a very small family, but here I have gained many brothers and sisters. I am happy because now I have a big family. God bless you all. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you, Christian, for interpreting. Jesus called to Francisco in Mexico, and Jesus called to Francisco here. And now we're going to read another story of Jesus calling. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The word of the Lord. Be to God. 
Jesus beckoned Francisco and Antonia to new life, to new community. Jesus beckoned Lazarus out of the grave and to new life and restoration to his community. And this is what Jesus does for each of us. Jesus calls all of us from the tomb and tells us to come forth. That's the word I heard when I first learned this story as a child. Come forth! Some of us have been metaphorically buried a long time. Some of us have been buried long enough to feel really and truly dead. Some of us feel like we might be a little stinky. But Jesus, our friend, loves us deeply. And Jesus, our friend, calls us to come forth, stench and all. Jesus the Christ has the power to release us from the grave, to release us from what binds us, and to bring us to new life in him. Jesus calls you, Jesus calls you all, Jesus calls us. And no matter how stinky we are, Jesus loves us, and embraces us, and unbinds us. Thanks be to God.